Cardamom is the queen of spices. It's native to the Cardamom Hills of southern India and is related to ginger. I'm in beautiful Guatemala this week to learn about the history of cardamom, its culinary uses, and nutrition. I'm going to meet a lot of fabulous people, and it's going to be a delicious week. So this is the cardamom plant. You can see it grows about eight feet tall or so. This is a two-year-old plant. And these branches that come out are actually the portion that creates uh, the flowers that in three to four months will turn into the fruit, or what they call cherry here, like a coffee cherry. Before they're dried, they actually have basically no flavor or aroma, but it's not until the drying process that the enzymes are activated and it actually gains all that potent aroma and sweetness that we know from cardamom. This area is recovering from Guatemala's devastating civil war, which ended only in 1996. Cardamom is a way to help the region recover. I went to speak with Pablo Moreno, founder of Cardamomus Restaurant, to learn more. Why do you think cardamom is so important to this area specifically? In reality, the establishment of cultivo se dio hace 100 years, más mm -hmm. o menos, y este esto hizo eh, que la región tuviera un gran impulso económico y un gran movimiento social alrededor del cultivo. En realidad la guerra civil no fue un factor que detuviera a la población en, en el propósito de cultivar cardamomo. Todo lo contrario, eh, fue un factor benevolente para eh, mitigar un poco las necesidades que estaban sufriendo los campesinos en ese momento del conflicto. De tal forma que fue una bendición traer el cultivo, eh, fue un alemán el que trajo el cultivo a esta región. We are so familiar with tortillas at home in the U.S., but I wanted to go to the heart of Guatemala to learn how to make the perfect Guatemalan tortilla, and also how not to. So today I'm here with Doña Maria and she's going to show me how to make the perfect Guatemalan tortilla. What they do is they take the dried corn and they cook it with water and cal, it's like limestone, and that helps to remove the skin on the outside, it makes it easier to digest, and it helps us get what we call masa. And so they're going to work it with the piedra, uh, the stone, and the, the mortar to a very fine paste-like texture. And I asked her, I said, what is your secret to the perfect tortilla? And she said, well, nothing really except experience. And a few tips she had was that whenever you heat the comal, which is the, the cast iron uh, cooking vessel that she's using here, it has to be super hot and that you rub it with a little bit of that cal or that slaked lime, and that helps to keep the tortillas from sticking. So they cook about a couple of minutes per side. She'll flip them, she'll keep flipping them, and you'll see she'll test them to see when they're forming the little pockets of air. And once they're getting a little brown color and they're forming those pockets, that's when they're going to be ready and she's going to put them on the side so the family has warm tortillas wrapped up in a towel in the basket. So now Doña Maria wants to test me. She wants to see if I've been paying attention, so she wants me to make one. Okay. The strategy is <laughs> you try to make it round and slowly, slowly make it larger. Yes, it can. Okay, she's like, put it down and quit messing with it. It's still not pretty, but... And look, now you have my fingerprints all over it. I'm sorry. <laughs> In order for cardamom to be sustainable for the farmers, they need to be able to grow multiple crops on their small plots of land. I drove out to visit Gustavo Hernandez of Heifer International in the Cibicte community to learn more. So tell me about Heifer. What is Heifer and what are the projects you're doing here? Well, we are an international NGO. One objective that we have is to help the families to close the living income gap. What at this time, what's in between oh, yes. the top and the bottom? Yes, we estimate that the family has an income close to $200. A month? A month, uh -huh, for a family of six members. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to help the families 
to get a uh, income of four, $400. Mm -hmm. And a way to close the gap is doing a diversification process. Mm -hmm. Here many families has cardamom and the cardamom has important fluctuations of price. Right. What we are doing is help the families to consider other spices. Mm -hmm. And we select these products by the demand of international and national markets. Mm -hmm. And so what other types of mentorship do you give the families? Part of the activities that we are doing, we are helping the family of Doña Maria and herself to planning in a best way this land. Mm -hmm. And in here you could see different species as cedar, mahogany, okay. but also you see cinnamon. So the idea is to promote an agroforestry system. That's amazing, what mm -hmm. a great project. Yes, it's a very interesting project. Awesome. Now I'm heading to check out two cardamom drying facilities, traditional and modern. Juan Miguel, I'd love it if you could explain to me how the drying process works. Eh, más o menos nosotros trabajamos aquí, tenemos dos sistemas, que es el, el que es con gas propano, GLP, y también con leña. Uh -huh. eh, utilizamos las cuestiones, utilizamos lo que son motores a diésel para el, el movimiento del ventilador. Uh -huh. El ventilador más que todo es el que nos introduce el aire hacia aquí para okay. que sea constante de igual manera. Ok, so it's a gas engine that works the ventilator that pushes the air up from the bottom and it comes up from here, right? Sí. Yeah. At the moment, as you can see, the, the drying are high inefficient. For dry 5,000 uh, pounds, they need 40 hours. Mm -hmm. 40 five, hours. 40 hours of, of burning firewood. Burning firewood. Constantly. And we estimate that the firewood that is used in each harvest is equivalent to 4,000 hectares. Something that we develop at this moment is called turbolizer. Turbolizer. And the turbolizer could increase the temperature mm -hmm. and this reduce the quantity of firewood that the actual dryers are using. Next, I headed over to Cardamomo's restaurant to meet with Chef Paula Enriquez. Her expertise is incorporating cardamom in every dish. Para la salsa, que es lo que generalmente primero hacemos mm -hmm. antes de sellar la carne, porque uh -huh. siempre tiene que ver el término. Sí, so we're going to make the sauce that goes with the tenderloin. So the pineapple goes in and then she's got the fresh samat. Sí, sí. El samate es bastante icónico de Alta Verapaz, está en el platillo regional. Ah. And she's just going to make like a rough puree in the blender. Esta es una salsa súper noble, súper fácil mm -hmm. y bastante aromatizada. De hecho, lo que es piña y cilantro es lo que hace salivar casi que a cualquiera. Mm -hmm. Y no íbamos con cardamón. So we're just going to simmer that lightly. She's just going to reduce it a little bit. And now she's going to add a little Dijon mustard. A teaspoon and a half, about. And then a little of the cane sugar, just to take a little bit of the tartness off of the pineapple. And now a little bit of sea salt. Nosotros acá utilizamos el cardamomo en los, ah. uh, en los molinos de pimienta porque es más fácil preservar sí. el, el molino, el Exacto. cardamomo en gran. Exacto. Ajá. So they put the cardamom seeds, not the whole pod, but the seeds in a pepper grinder so they can always have it freshly ground. And really that's it. It's a super simple sauce, really fresh, very aromatic. ¿Sí sentís el, el, el aroma? Mm -hmm. el aroma? Oh, claro que sí. Ajá. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Aromatherapy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. ¿Cómo te gusta? ¿Te gusta? Um, tres cuartos. ¿Tres cuartos? Sí. Okay. Mm -hmm. sí. That was pimienta. Sí. Okay. Sal y pimienta. Sí. Mm -hmm. The salt and pepper. Mm. Mm. Also super fresh and local. So just to your taste, however much you like. Notice how she's browning all the sides of the filet. Sometimes you get a nice thick filet, you want to make sure you brown the sides so you can get an even temperature inside. The pineapple she's going to use for the garnish has been macerated in a syrup made with cardamom, white sugar, and white vinegar, along with some ground cardamom. Mm. Awesome. Casi listo. Si. So she's going to start pleating. 
And you see that this texture of her sauce is, is smooth. It's not perfectly smooth. She hasn't completely uh, pureed the, the leaves of the samat. Ah, she said it's ready. Beautiful. And then for her garnish, like we talked about, the beautiful macerated pineapple. And then she has here a gorgeous flower from the cardamom plant. And then the fried amaranth leaf. And then a little more fresh cardamom to finish the dish. It's gorgeous. There's an interesting study pointing to the critical health benefits of cardamom. I had a conversation with Dr. Luis Cisneros of Texas A&M University. Hello, Dr. Cisneros, and thank you for taking the time to speak to me today about your study on cardamom. How are you doing? Very good, Simone. Thank you for your invitation. Um, can you tell me why specifically you're doing a study on spices? So spices, among the different types of crops that exist, are basically enriched products that contain bioactive compounds. So uh, throughout centuries, they have been consumed in different societies, and there are claims that uh, they promote health. So in the case of cardamom, we looked at its anti-inflammatory properties, because inflammation is one of the events that lead to many of these chronic diseases, like, say, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, uh, neurological disorders, and so on. What a great study. So what do you think is going to be the, your greatest hope for the outcome of this study? Well, right now, we're conducting some research with mice, which is basically the next step after working with cells. And with the mice work, we're trying to confirm these uh, effects against what we call the metabolic syndrome, which is where overweight and obesity uh, basically uh, create all these different scenarios of diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So we're working with mice to determine uh, how cardamom operates or work at the same time, find out the dose that's needed to basically attenuate those effects. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you, Simone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anna is going to show me how to make kakik. Now, kakik is a traditional Mayan soup made for honored guests. I can't tell you how lucky I feel to be able to experience it. Doña Ana, ¿qué haces? Estoy haciendo, eh, estoy, voy a moler en los ingredientes del caldo, lo que vamos a preparar para las 12. Uh -huh. Lleva ajo. Ajo eh, entero. Eh, ajo entero, uh -huh. eh, ah, eh, tomate es... y cebolla. Cebolla. Ahora vamos a empezar. Cocido, todo. Este, asado. Asado, okay. sí. Muy bien. Asado ahí en brasa. The broth is cooked, so we have the chicken, there's water, and then she puts uh, roasted tomato, roasted onion, whole garlic, cilantro, and some achiote, which is anada for flavor. And it cooks for about three hours. We'll be ready. A repartir la comida y acompañar unos tamalitos que preparamos aquí. Oh, wow, so these are like little tamales that they prepare that are gonna go with the soup, and they're wrapped in banana leaves. Oh, wow, they smell great. Este es el pollo. Mm -hmm. Este es el pollo que vamos a partir. Ya está listo. Vamos a empezar a partir la carne, uh -huh. sacarlas por piezas. Okay, so you're going to cut the chicken into pieces, serving taza. pieces. Right. And you can see the color of the chicken. It's just kind of that orangish golden color, and that's from the achiote or the anato seeds. No podemos, okay. And now put some broth. Great. <laughs> Vamos, buen provecho. Sí, va a ser provecho. Voy a comer. Mm. Qué rico. Me gusta la comida. Sí, muy sabroso. Muchas rico? gracias, sí. <laughs> What was your vision behind starting this restaurant of Cardamomos? La historia del restaurante es principalmente exponer al cultivo como, digamos, un gran laboratorio de decir, bueno, miren, nosotros estamos exportando el grano y generamos divisas, generamos ingresos para el país, pero ¿por qué no eh, le damos valor agregado? ¿Por qué no fuimos capaces antes de demostrar 
cómo se usa, para qué se usa, uh -huh. por qué se usa. Uh -huh. Nos hemos tomado ese reto aquí en el restaurante como un tributo y como una exposición. Un tributo hacia los pequeños productores. Uh -huh. Decirles, les agradecemos mucho haber mantenido uh -huh. este cultivo y estamos conscientes de que debemos aportar nuestro mejor esfuerzo para devolverles algo en campo. So, cardamom is like an example of a catalyst to take the rural areas from where they are now into the future. Y yes. cardamomo es nuestro gran debate cat catalizador uh -huh. de esa, digamos, gran fórmula que tenemos que descubrir. Ya no podemos seguir exportando simplemente así. Queremos marca país. Uh -huh. Queremos decir este es el cardamomo de Guatemala uh -huh. y que la gente sepa que el cardamomo de Guatemala viene de gente que ha hecho un esfuerzo tremendo en uh -huh. campo uh -huh. y que la pobreza rural es importante devolver riqueza uh -huh. y así vamos a encontrar el desarrollo. Cardamom isn't native to Guatemala, but what I've learned this week is it's at the center of a vision to change the country. Spices aren't just critical to cuisine, they play an important role in people's lives. See y'all next time on The Life of Spice.